Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, minutes. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. <laughs> What was that? I don't know. I'm just mixing it up, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> it's real late. <laughs> Welcome back. It sounds like the Mises. Are you summer. like, yeah, do you have an umbrella in your hand? <laughs> I do. <laughs> What'd you call it? A bumble shuts? A, A bumper shoot. Bumper shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Brawly. Welcome back to the bumper shoot minute. <laughs> this is the podcast where we discuss the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, one close enough quotation at a time. <laughs> I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Pete Mubbert. I'm Gerald Christopher St. Bibiana, patron saint of hangovers, Porter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, there's so many of them, I could do movies forever. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm Jim O'Kane uh, of podcasting uh, min- movies by minute fame, uh, most recently on the Rocketeer Minute, and now the uh, currently upcoming Apollo 13 Minute. Awesome and welcome. Welcome back, Jim. Thanks for having me back. It's always nice to have you here, and you have been excited to talk about this specific minute for a long time. I moderately love it. I feel this way, well, Tom, the way you get when when you start uh, having uh, arguments about uh, how, whether uh, whether the, um, the whether the movie is is serious or not. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. it, it gets you I get so angry at this Charlemagne quote that it does not it does not exist in history. It is not who Charlemagne was. Charlemagne, <laughs> the, the furthest you could move, uh, you know, in, in the Venn diagram, the circle of Charlemagne and the circle of um, the rocks and the trees and things like that, they cannot be further apart in the box that is the Venn diagram. Uh, but Charlemagne did not say this. I, I, this. This was a transrectal extraction by uh, Henry Jones Sr. Wow. I didn't want to do the bookends now. <laughs> I love that we haven't even described the minute. I love it. This There's nothing to be- say. No, go ahead, Tom. You, we might as well bring everybody up to speed. Well, here's yeah. what I have written down. <laughs> <laughs> this minute 82, it begins with Henry remembering a Charlemagne. Right? (laughs) (laughs) And ends with Donovan presenting precious valuables to Alexi Sale from the Young Ones. (laughs) (laughs) I think the Charlemagne thing, though, is representative of a lot that goes on in these movies, is that Indy often shows very little skepticism regarding his sources. Hmm. And I think Henry seems to be kind of doing that as well. It's almost like a History Channel version of history. (laughs) It's like you see something like, "Hey, yeah, I'm gonna believe this alien thing. I'm gonna believe this Nazi thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this made-up Charlemagne quote." Well, the the year after this came out, the movie Dick Tracy was was a moderate flop in the theaters. And uh, if if you remember Al Pacino as Big Boy Caprice, he would always mention these quotes where he'd say stuff like "All's fair in love and war." Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> and, <Okay. laughs> you know, if you ain't for the people, you can't buy the people. Abraham Lincoln, and it was just he just made them up on the spot. And I keep thinking he was inspired by the movie the previous year, where this Charlemagne <laughs> nonsense just spilled out. So is this like misappropriated from somebody else, or is this just wholly made up out of nowhere, or what is? Like I don't know. I don't know my my fake Charlemagne or my Charlemagne. I have no idea where you could get Charlemagne from. I mean, Charlemagne was you know, the Holy Roman Empire uh, uh, emperor, and he mm-hmm. he was king of the Franks, and he you know he conquered. He, he's pretty much the Hitler of his time, except for you know not extermination camps. He just went in with straight out war. Mm-hmm. But he 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 was known as the father of Europe. But the only reason he was known as the father of Europe was well, he married like four different wives and had a hundred kids but he conquered the saxons that he was king of the franks he he mostly took over what's now you know germany um bavaria austria uh into you know butting up against the balkans and uh he the last thing he would do would be to say that he's at you know he's at wit's end and using the rocks and the trees to protect himself i mean he was big on um he pioneered in europe at least uh horse attacks you know cavalry attacks um he didn't have 
he did everything but come up with the the idea of the stirrup, which the I mean the Europe changed once they invented the stirrup because you could have somebody holding a lance and kill a lot of people by mm-hmm. skewering them with a lance. But he he did the the old hacking and whacking with swords, and uh, I mean that's not that's not using a bunch of seagulls. He was big, he was big on the slicing and dicing. Not a yeah. He, 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 he had he had a lot of hardware that he could work with, and it wasn't it yeah. wasn't seagulls. Right, right. <laughs> it does. It, it is sort of a Zen like quote there, isn't it? <laughs> Although there is, and I, I I agree that this quote is completely spurious, and I like I don't think it comes from anything like I, it, everything I could find. This doesn't come from anything except. I mean, is this Tom yeah, Stoppard or Tom is Stoppard. this Jeffrey yeah. Bohm or what? I think I think almost all the dialogue was Stoppard, so I'm assuming it's him. Hmm. But it, it is. I mean, Charlemagne was kind of, if I think, known for being kind of the also a great thinker, which I don't think is necessarily. I don't know if history backs it up, but I think there was this well, you know, idea warrior king, along. yeah, yeah. yeah. And and the the idea that he kind of cultivated learning in his court, and so I think at least that part of him, it makes sense that that's who Henry would quote, like whether the quote is real or like it, it, I think Henry would gravitate towards somebody that's a a medieval historical figure, but then b somebody that's got some power, but also has this you know, there's this idea out there that he's also an intellectual. I you know what's strange about this is out of all the people who lived in the Middle Ages, I mean, they could write, and they said stuff. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. just just <laughs> yeah. pick a quote from the Middle Ages. Yeah, or, yeah. nature. Yeah, just, yeah, it's not that, like, like, this that. is kind of like a 15-minute a no-brainer for, like, a PA or something, you know, an assistant. Yeah. You're like, okay, look, this is what I need. I just need something that, you know, just give them a little task. It'd be like, hey, give it to me tomorrow morning. Yeah, you know, and you, fables could have worked, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's all sorts of stuff. Now, I know. I think they use Charlemagne because exactly. You're like, I don't know anything about Charlemagne except wasn't he somewhere around like the Middle Ages ish? And you're like, sure. If 800 is the Middle Ages, I guess. I mean, you're all into the Crusades. That's 1100. It's only 300 years yeah. difference. I mean, yeah. it's just a little. It's yeah. It's a little easy. It, it would have been nice if this was not a spurious uh quote <laughs> yeah yeah well it worked on 18 year old tom taylor in 1989 <laughs> well, it worked out i had all, no idea it... what he was talking about did you get the tattoo tom i gotta know <laughs> I did. i'm into charlemagne now because he said the thing about the birds in the air or whatever but we <laughs> killed people with an umbrella and some birds you don't know me mom and dad yeah. <laughs> charlemagne for life yeah <laughs> well that's i mean but this is we talked about this with uh with jennifer right where it's kind of like okay so when the history is wrong mm-hmm. <laughs> in the movie but then it does you know pique your interest and maybe you go out uh, you go and you, and you look it up yourself you know i mean i don't know it's a shame it's wrong well i, I did wind up though i wound up on a and, and i agree with what Jennifer was saying, I, I, I think that's definitely important. But then I also wound up somehow on a Charlemagne site, like a site. It was just Charlemagne fans and scholars. And they actually kind of liked that this was in there, even though they it, it graded on them that it was not a Charlemagne quote. But they liked it. It got people thinking about Charlemagne. And it like hmm. kind of piqued people's curiosity. But you know what would be awesome? If they just used a quote from Charlemagne. Yeah, and then and then it solves both things. There's no uncomfortable weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. We don't have to use the word spurious. <laughs> yeah, right. it's just be a. You know, you look up Charlemagne, and then you're like, "Damn, he said that. That dude was dope." <laughs> I'm gonna start quoting real Charlemagne <laughs> whenever I want, <laughs> instead of like, "Ah, oh, I could make. You know, I could make stuff up too." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just attribute it to Charlemagne. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we do it. In American history has it with uh, Parson Weems' tale. You have uh, uh, Washington cutting down a cherry yeah. tree, and they can't tell yeah. a lie. I mean, mm-hmm. that never yeah. happened, but it's like yeah. it, tell, it tells well. So we hold right. on to you know the Parson Weems fable. But then you know what? I think about the like. Does it tell well? Like George Washington never told a lie. Looks at that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, why was I taught this? And you get pissed off. Yeah. I'll never be George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, somewhere somebody, you know, it wasn't Steely Dan, but somebody, you know, appreciated uh, Charlemagne enough that the other yeah. other people got interested in him. And here we are talking about him yeah, a yeah, thousand yeah. years later. So. But that's just go ahead and say, say it was Steely Dan. That's fine. 
Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. So, I have a question for you again, Pete. Oh. Um, has Henry developed a taste for blood? <laughs> <laughs> after this you know he because you know his umbrella is now wide open maybe, mm-hmm. maybe his eyes mm. are wide open you know <laughs> i mean like is, is there a bloodlust here because the, cause mary, he, the mary poppins killer yeah. yes yes <laughs> he, he, he has you know he has this insouciant step here you know and and, and yeah and he enjoyed in, that he's embracing yeah, yeah. the, the blood world lust. on a string yeah yeah exa- exactly exactly <laughs> He's preparing to leave a trail of bodies all the way from here to Hattay. <laughs> yes. To walk across the Mediterranean. <laughs> I'm, well, now I'm like, so, so okay, Charlemagne, like you're going to use the rocks and the water and the birds to just murder everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like this, this, this movie's going to get really interesting. I'll show you some dead Carolingians. <laughs> <laughs> we'll actually birds. see what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to be like when Darth Vader was throwing those toasters and things at Luke in uh, Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <and> like, <laughs> moving just random inanimate objects. Yeah. I just picture him like Darth Vader at the end of Rogue One now. And he's just going to be like walking <laughs> yeah. down the beach just like throwing Nazis against the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting them with fish and anything that's yeah. laying on the beach. <laughs> hey, so Henry uh, walks past Indy and, and misquotes his made-up Charlemagne. And uh, and Indy, you know, we get this, this lingering look of Indy watching his dad go. And it's an obvious question, but what is he thinking exactly right now? He's proud. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Question mark. I, <laughs> see, oh, and, 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 right, and what else we get here is we get the slow pensive indiana yeah Mm -hmm. yeah 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 those french horns and what's really weird is it's like so just now indiana jones is realizing that maybe knowing your history can be useful (laughs) (laughs) am i am i wrong that this is is fundamental is is this the same i think it's the same uh cue when uh when uh uh, marcus is talking in raiders and he says an arm an army that hold that has the ark in front of it uh, would be invincible it's, and it's very it does very the fade. similar yeah yeah but but that makes sense to me this is really strange well you say pensive i think it, it comes across to me as just sort of well, I was going to say thoughtful, <laughs> which is basically the same thing as pensive. <laughs> but, 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 but it, mean... it's, it's weird. Like, you, you know that he's like, he's, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm having a trouble saying it, but I also want to say that it's clear and obvious what he's thinking. He's he's sort of like re-seeing his dad in like a new way or something. Yeah, <laughs> murderer. Yeah, yeah. He says, "Oh my God, I taught my dad to murder. What have I done? <laughs> you got to get See, back to this." Now, too. I'd be I'd be cool with that. I'd be cool if like, oh my God, I taught my dad to murder. We got to get. <laughs> but it's not reading like that to me. It's reading as as you know. It's reading as kind of goofy as like, wow, he used his Charlemagne to save us. It's just like, well, dude, you're an archaeologist. All you do all day is history and study history and ancient civilization. I mean, right? Yeah, I think he's just proud. Like, he realizes his dad's actually kind of cool, and he's kind of proud. I mean, the script calls out. It says he wears a proud expression as he watches he watches Henry walk down the beach. And I think I'm it's just... Guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it's just dawning on him that, hey, my dad's a lot like me. This guy, I, I like this guy. That's pretty good. Cats in the cradle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He he. I'm I'm watching it right now. It's second twelve. He looks a little. I don't maybe. I don't know. Maybe troubled. A little puzzled at least. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like everything. Well, it's obvious. Supposed to read is like everything he thought he knew about his dad just changed. Yeah. Where, yeah. where is where is dad walking to? I'm, I mean, now that he has this, all I can think of with the with the bloodlust, he's walking back up to where the citron went into the hill. Yeah. He's gonna go back down that tunnel. He's gonna find that guy, the guy that was changing the tire, and go, "Where's the other car, old man?" Yeah. 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 Oh, more, exactly. more. And more, he's gonna more. kick the guy's head that came bouncing towards the camera. Yeah. But yes. he's gonna do it all using nature. Yeah. <laughs> this, this time we're getting into the boat. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna try and get the dude to get to be struck by lightning somehow. <laughs> I never even thought about that, but this is a complete mic drop minute. Like that walk, it has yeah. no yeah. purpose oh, yeah. other than him dropping the mic. Oh, wait, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird moment. That, that this is this is weirder than I thought it was when I was asking the question because I was trying to get. 
<laughs> I'm trying to get it like, well, okay, Indy's having this moment, but what's the moment? Is it like, oh, my dad's kind of cool, or my dad's, oh, I kind of like my dad. It's never seemed like he hasn't liked his dad. Like, he does like his dad. Right. And he's just been distanced from him, and that's what's bugging him. But he's not having, there's nothing that just happened that's making him have a realization or a pensive moment about that. That's, that's why dad made me count to two. In Greek. <laughs> if, I, if I count to 20 in Greek, then you know my rage goes down and I don't kill people. <laughs> he was right all along. But it is weird. It's like, oh, because I have kind of a sense now of like, oh, my dad's all right. My dad's pretty cool. He can kill people like I yeah. do. Yeah. He's finally coming out of his shell. He killed birds and a guy in one felt swoop. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sick listen, movie. listen. <laughs> I know we're we're gonna get raked over the coal on I the listeners. You guys, <laughs> you dumbasses! Why'd you decide to do this movie? <laughs> why do you hate Indiana's dad? Yeah, why do you hate? It? No, and I understand it's not supposed to re- read like that at all. But <laughs> I am. I'm watching it, and they play the Indiana Jones theme, which is triumphal. Yeah. But it's, it's also kind of murder. Like, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> a murder. <laughs> and it's kind of. <laughs> Wait, and it that is, was, sorry, that wasn't the Raiders theme. That was our podcast theme. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I can't. I can't tell them apart anymore. Well, so okay, okay, Pete. You know, uh, <clears throat> ray of sunshine, flock of butterflies. What? What is? What is this? What am I missing here? How is this supposed to go? No, I think Tom nailed it. I think. He sees his dad kill a guy, and he's like, that guy's pretty cool. <laughs> that guy's pretty cool. Well, he saved their life. That's the whole yeah. thing. Is it, I think yeah, the, yeah. the whole thing, yeah, that's what it is. It's not like, oh, he killed the guy, and he's just like me. It's like, no, he, he, he saved our lives. But actually, what's interesting, he saved our lives by getting off his ass. <laughs> uh, that that was the i mean that's that's what it is this is the first last minute yesterday was the first time we've actually seen his dad do something he's a field worm now yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a field he's always worm. walking over to get into that apple car yeah. well yeah. <laughs> he's, well or he's he's heading for a guy with a boat and you're gonna see remember when um when uh, Indy was getting yelled at in the sub pen and the guy was telling him, you know, so, you're so unkempt. And then he like punches the guy and all you see is a hat go up in the air. That's what you, you see. Like <laughs> dad will be saying that you see another, a fishing cap go up in the air and then he'll put it on. Yeah. A bunch of fish go flying. <laughs> we got a boat. <laughs> this is, I mean, the, yesterday and today's minutes are huge character development minutes. Uh huh. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Either way. <laughs> well, they had to end it here because there was no. Where where were you gonna go after this? I, yeah. You like, know, I'm really wondering walk what. Like, I don't remember anything about this movie, so I'm dying to know whether they're in Greece or the coast of Spain or wherever. I, like, where are they going now? Like, how are, are they walking up the hill and then are they gonna hitchhike? Are they gonna have to steal another vehicle or, you know, I I don't know. I'm on pins and needles. Yeah, and and is his dad gonna be walking like that <laughs> forever? Yeah. All yeah. Now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about intolerable. It's like, yeah, two yeah. years ago he saved our lives. Okay, <laughs> tell about the time I killed the guy with the birds. <laughs> dad, we're indoors now. <laughs> Bring the umbrella down. <laughs> we're back in Jersey. Hopefully, that blimp was you know the nonstop Berlin to Valley of the Crescent Moon, so they don't have to go too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're on the way. Yep. Um, we cut to the Republic of Hattay. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. Hattay, oh, Hattay. Pete, I have so many questions for you. Oh, wait, can I just ask one question real quickly? Yeah. yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's really weird, the title cards that we get and the title cards that we don't get. Hmm. Like, we got the sort of establishing Utah 1912. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I think this is the only other one in the movie, and is it the only other one in the series? Oh, wow. Without a map, yeah, I think. Wow. And is it is this the same font as Utah 1912? I don't think so. I was just thinking of, well, yeah, I'm not it, sure. I don't think, it doesn't seem like, this seems like a Close Encounters font. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it's, it's an yeah. anachronism. Yeah, it's, yeah, it looks very modern. It does. Yeah, it <laughs> does, weird. actually. Yeah. yeah. And this matte shot here is interesting. Because this, uh, Jerry, I, I know, I know you've been here. This is the Blue Mosque in Istanbul. I, you know what? I thought for sure it was. Yeah, it had. I, in, in 
it like it's interesting because in real life that's just you know two blocks from Hagia Sophia. Yeah. So this is like a very but they made this matte shot, this composite thing, and I swear that that those palm trees on the hill in the background are by you at Chavez Ravine or Dodger Stadium. Because <laughs> it looks exactly like Actually, the hill on top of my daughter's Seven Eleven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they added a few extra minarets here and like all yeah. Istanbul well, th- and that's all what I trees. wanted. Like, like the God that looks like the... doesn't does the Blue Mosque have four minarets though? Yeah, they added some minarets. Well, yeah, it almost looks like feed, they're... doesn't it? it just... Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. Maybe the Blue Mosque more. is interesting though, because Hagia yeah. Sophia on the outside is not nearly as beautiful but you go inside and it's just it overwhelms you with how gorgeous it is and you feel yeah. dwarfed and mm-hmm. i think the blue mosque is the opposite i think it's especially beautiful on the outside and then you go inside you're like huh i, I huh. was expecting more <laughs> 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 that mosque blue <laughs> but both very very famous places it looks also like um the uh, fortune and glory wall you know the where uh Oh, where Indy was trying to get his, you know, get where's my shirt and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I, the the mood that it that it hit yeah. me was kind of a fortune and glory thing. Huh. I can see that. Yeah. The next thing should be like belly dancers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you were going to ask stuff about, uh, or was that it, Jerry? Oh no, no, I I I was dying to know pete what can you, do you i know you have a bedtime story about the republic of hatai <laughs> i don't know jim might have more than i do yeah Hattay. i mean it was it was briefly a real place like it was yeah, briefly like its own country 1938 like to 1939 or something was not yeah it? yeah and it, it surrounded alexandretta yeah yeah so it's fair to say this is completely accurate <laughs> other than the fact that it did not look anything like this, but yeah, mm. yeah, and okay. it was it was French too, right? I mean, yeah, was, I think the, the French, and, yeah, and they, and they didn't have a, a monarchy. There was no, it was a, uh, it was all those mandatory things, the uh, the different divisions of uh, of the Middle East, like you had Palestine and mm-hmm. and all these other ones, and Hattay was part of what is now Syria, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. so it's it's fair to say that this is somewhat accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything against this scene, but I'm not sure why it's in the movie. I, you know, me, I don't either. I, I, like, why, why does Donovan and the Nazis need to clear this grail business uh, with your highness? This seems very un-Nazi-like. Or even if he does, why does the audience yeah. have to see that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, they could have just shown up in the desert and be like, oh, here they are in the desert. They got tanks and whatnot. yeah. Although you do see kind of the lowest of the low of the Nazi stuff here. Because mm-hmm. like That's Vogel true. kind of very distastefully, he doesn't even want to touch the golden pitcher. I mean, because you assume it comes from, you know, it was looted from Jewish victims. Yeah. And he being in the SS doesn't even want to touch it with his hands. Mm-hmm. And he like, kind of like, these are just nasty, nasty guys. And you yeah. can't wait for him to get their comeuppance. Now, yeah. I, I'm, I'm amazed at the amount, this seems to be the headgear crossover between... Um, you know we've got we've got uh, Donovan in the trilby, and then the uh, the Sultan has his uh, fez, and all the other uh-huh. guys are wearing fezes. Except in the background, they're kind of wearing um, sick turbans. They're the the oh, guys yeah. with the lances, and that just doesn't seem um, geographically correct. Although I may be horribly wrong, and that's part of like a burnous <laughs> that you'd wear. You know, the maybe the Saudis have it. But it's just, it that 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 whole outfit that the you know the lance guys are holding. Oh like, yeah. Seems yeah. like they're on the wrong continent or something. Yeah. Well, it's, it, you know, it's strange because, I mean, obviously, you know, your highness is insulted. Uh, first of all, they, they offer him precious valuables, which is redundant. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> and then it's like he gives your highness, you know, this beat-ass genie's lamp. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like, kind of tosses really? it at him like he's yeah, not selling it like, at all it's he's just like this, you this, scene, yeah. this scene yeah. is actually strange yeah, yeah. it's kind of strange and Vogel's saying bring the treasure right and yeah the is that what yeah. The yeah. treasure yeah yeah and it's just like have you seen where this guy lives <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna show up with like a like a trunk of you know beat ass genie's lamps yeah and he's gonna be like oh really <laughs> he, he's, he's probably got more gold in that vest that he's wearing yeah. than the, <laughs> the pot that they hold up yeah. and so i either think like a 
the Nazis and Donovan just, you know, they just they wouldn't bother at all. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do. Maybe they just invade or show up or may maybe pay some local people to search or something. Or B, they might do it right and be like, okay, you know, look, maybe not right, but be like, you know, we're not, <laughs> if you're looking for some uh, temporary treaty or truce or, you know, uh, passport to go in and steal <laughs> the Holy Grail <laughs> or antiquities or whatever it is, you're not just going to show up with a trunk of silly stuff. No, I, I think they'd show up with a couple of crates of, you know, of rifles. Yeah, or, uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Or, or, yeah. Or, or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, e either like, yeah, maybe weapons or, or hell, I don't know. Maybe some technology. I don't know, but just not. Or, or they might threaten them and say, hey, look, we're going to go for this. And that's what's going to happen. You know, we're going to go for this and you guys are going to let us go for this. The other the other side of the coin, though, is if. I mean, because at this point, they still had Romanian oil in their sites, and they wound up using mm. Romanian oil. They hadn't like gotten to the point where they had to make synthetic oil. But I think they always had their eyes at some point on Middle Eastern oil. So it's possible that they didn't like, you know, ultimately they didn't want to insult this guy because they think, oh, maybe there's oil here. Let's treat him courteously in case we need to come back and we want something else. But hmm. you'd figure they'd drop off maybe planes or tanks or, I don't yeah. know, Bavarian yeah. chocolate. I don't know. Something that you could... <laughs> right. <laughs> you could, Although, if as, as Pete was saying, that you know that, that they wanted Middle Eastern oil, the last thing that they want to give them is a way to fight back. <laughs> so, this is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounds like yeah. he's got a ton of tanks and business anyway. That might yeah. be, yeah. Yeah. I, you know what I noticed <laughs> in this minute? Actually, your highness comes from your highness. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean that's kind of crazy. Your highness. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, this, is the, be... this is the 82 minute stretch. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. I'm, I'm more Did tired. Did you guys ever put that together? Well, you say it to like your highness. <laughs> sure, yeah. your highness. You put like a suffix at the end of a word. And... Yeah, but have you I mean <laughs> your so highness? <laughs> All of a sudden, it's an adjective. Yeah, it's just um, weird. I, I'm well, focused. Well, well. I'm focused constantly as I'm scrubbing back and forth. All I look at is Donovan's shoes. Those white shoes. <laughs> you know, it's like that's it. it it's they, they sparkle. They're yeah, just absolute. It's it's f f f f f f on the uh, color chart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a, a note here for you, Pete. Is it that your highness is a fever dream reference? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I like that. That's good. But, uh, you know, could you pull off that Donovan out outfit with the white hat and the no, shoes and no the light way. blue? Are you sure? I think you might be underestimating yourself. No, I, I can't yourself. do I couldn't do the summer look. You couldn't do the summer hmm. look? Uh-uh. Hmm. Nope. Tom Taylor might be able to pull this off. Yeah, Tom could pull this off. Oh, really? Yeah. Jim, you I'll could try. pull this off, too, I think. Uh, Oh, I don't, I don't know. I'd need a, yeah, I need a really wide vest. I do miss the three piece though. I mean, I used to mm. back in the, back in the eighties, that was like standard office gear. Uh -huh. And then in the nineties, the vest went away. And then in the late nineties, the jackets went away. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, basically everybody looks like they're you know, doing the laundry and they went to work. So, <laughs> you know, these kids today, I'm just, the other thing I'm impressed is the tailoring on Donovan's suit, because one of the hardest things in a suit is to, um, not have your knees showing too much as you're walking mm. and even even though you know he's still got the knees coming through the, the the material the way it's cut you don't you still get the leg thing without looking like you know the uh, the bottom part of the pants are kind of flared out from mm. your knees uh -huh. but it's a very impressive tailoring job on that thing yeah um, yeah and Alexi Sale doesn't look bad in that that other thing that he's got with the tassels going on. Yeah, I really. couldn't pull that off. I could, <laughs> maybe the girth. I, I could pull off the girth, but not, <laughs> not just carrying it that well. <laughs> well, uh, you know, let me just ask any of you guys here. How transparent has Donovan been to your highness? And, and why? Like, he, according to this little scene, he just tells him everything. Well, it yeah, might be like Pete said. He, they they want to. They need stuff. Need something from him, and they don't want to uh, be completely boobish jerks about it. Case, <laughs> so uh, they, they dump to... a trunk of genie lamps and yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Yes, here we got this at the Goodwill. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, 
but it, I was just thinking, you know, he has no reason to lie to him because he, I would think that while they're working in Hatay and he's got all the, you know, they have every digger in Cairo over in, uh, in Hatay now. And he probably, I would think that the Sultan has a bunch of uh, eyes and ears on whatever the Nazis are doing. So mm. huh. lying to him at this point would just show the deceit and they don't really have room for deceit because they want this guy on their side. But mm-hmm. he, he's all up in the like, this is Dr. Jones's diary. And it yeah. says here on page 57. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you just like, he doesn't say like, well, we have a piece that we're interested in yeah. and I, we we're think we know where it, it is. Well, yeah. and even the fact that they say it's the Holy Grail, that it's not like, yeah. oh, we're looking for an artifact. It's This is the Holy Grail. This uh, is the Holy Grail. Which, unless which, the Sultan's like, oh, I don't care about that stuff. Yeah, see, that's that was my next yeah. question is, what, why does your highness not care about the Grail? Like is is it is it for him? Is it just it happened to be? Yeah, I don't know that other religion or whatever. Meh. Because I, I mean, if someone told me that I had like uh, Kali's skirt of arms, uh-huh. you know, in in my backyard, uh-huh. even though I might not, you know, maybe maybe that's that's not exactly my religious uh, flavor right here. I'd still be. I'd be like, oh, really? Tell me more. Where is it now? <laughs> huh. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll call yeah. you next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. I'd be like, "Hey, you <laughs> over there? Why don't you look up uh, and tell me is this thing worth anything? Yeah. You know, I just want to know more about it." <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd think that, and it's not like Syria at the time wasn't a you know a completely Muslim country. They had the Maronites and stuff. There uh-huh. was a lot of Christians in the area. Yeah, so absolutely. He would, he would have known what the drill was about. Oh, the Holy Grail. Right. I got it. You know. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or he might, I mean, it might be, you know, you might research it for maybe five, ten minutes and then be like, oh, everlasting life. <laughs> oh, okay. I and then, that. you know, let, let me call you tomorrow. And like, nah, 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 I said I'd call you tomorrow. <laughs> it's cool. I'll call you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, now I'm picturing like James Mason in North by Northwest and all the, you know, the, the auction scene and just, just, <laughs> yeah. just playing yeah. games with Donovan the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, to you is, why does the audience need to see this? What mm-hmm. is it set up? I, I don't know, because I don't remember the mess of the movie, but... What, what does Marcus need to be there? Yeah, he looks terrible. Like, he's, <laughs> he's all disheveled, and he looks like he's completely... Like, he's not no... pulling that suit off very well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, yo, what are you guys talking about? Oh, Uh-oh. poor Jerry. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you guys talking about? Are you well, he's right there. Yeah, he's second forty-three or second uh, fifty-nine. He's yeah, he's right right there next to the uh, the Sultan. A se- a second fifty-nine. I never get that far. Oh <laughs> no, yeah. I see. He's the dude behind. He's right there next to Alexi yeah. Sale. It just that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, he's next to that tiny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Two tiny guys, yeah. Next to the guy with the only black fez. I never noticed that guy <laughs> before until just this latest scrub. I'm like, black fez? <laughs> it's not done, is it? I mean, Your I'm... cousin from out of town. <laughs> <laughs> cousin from out of town. I think Mussolini's guys wore black fezes for a while. Oh, really? Oh. Maybe he's maybe he's an Italian mob. Maybe Italian, Italian representative, fascist. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought when they were doing like you know li- the living checkerboard and they were you know they'd stand up on the second floor and play checkers <laughs> down below and move the guy with the red fez. Yeah, <laughs> king me. I love how <laughs> gun shy Pete got when somebody <laughs> mentioned Marcus around me. Hey 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 hey! Before before Jerry Jerry finds out Marcus is in this scene. <laughs> well, I got a question: Is this the same courtyard from Lawrence of Arabia? God, I was Ooh. thinking that. I thought I was being stupid, but it you feels just said it's very. Not smart. It feels. I did, I, and I didn't think about it until now, just now. But yeah. this feels like the exact same courtyard. Hmm. Yeah. Leave it to Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, it, it reminds me of uh, if you've ever been to San Juan in Puerto Rico, the El Convento has a, almost the same. The same. I, I know exactly courtyard. what you're talking about. Yeah, that yeah. place is awesome. It's great. Fantastic pina coladas. <laughs> Although you know, I haven't been down there since the hurricane, so who knows what's, yeah. what's, what's on there. <laughs> but it it was a nice place when I was there. <laughs> yeah, that that was a nice place when I was there. So when is San Juan? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm dying to go back. Actually, <laughs> um, what would be served in that gold pot? What would, would you think? That's is that a samovar kind of thing? Is it like would you put Turkish coffee? I don't know what would hmm. what would that be used for. That that would require a longish 
narrow hose coming out of it. I and mean, it looks like something you'd you'd oil the tin man with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, don't I don't it know. It could maybe it is an oil an olive oil oh. you know decanter. Maybe. Hmm. I think you just rub it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that hard. Yeah. You rub it and, and then you wait a, like that you know would, a second or two. That would be a great <laughs> jumping off point for this movie if they suddenly went, you know, this genie appeared. <laughs> it was like, "Oh my gosh, the Nazis have a genie." And then just go off in that direction. Oh my god. <laughs> now I want to watch that movie. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm a little surprised Marcus isn't more gaga eyed over the treasure here. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem to care at all. He's just never broken. Seen such a picture. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe he's figuring from the cross sections it's not really an antique. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, it does. I mean, the Nazis seem to uh, grossly underestimate uh, your highness here. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're just lowballing. It's the beginning of their, uh, you know. Talks. I mean, look where I'm looking at the courtyard, and yeah. then just yeah, and you look at I mean, the dude has like an entourage that's you know, fit for a highness. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if you've covered this before, but would you say that the Nazis are less powerful in this movie than in Raiders? They seem to be depleted. I mean, we get all hmm. the way down to Berlin, but it seems like they're just the the Nazis aren't as. Um, you know, omniscient or, uh, you know, ahead of the game with, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, they're, they're no, kind of closer to the grail here, but they don't oh, seem that's to, a great point. they don't seem to be that threatening as they were in Raiders. And we did, we did talk about that. And that's a great point. They're, they're a little toothless mm-hmm. in some of the, they're, they're not as menacing. They're not as mean. <laughs> Which yeah. you don't say about Nazis that often. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I mean, t- you know, tote really uh, carried a lot of that in a great yeah. way. Yeah, and we 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 just don't really have that here. No, Vogel gets his little you know glove slaps along the way, but he's not. He doesn't. I'm not. I don't feel as menaced by Vogel as Tote was. Yeah. Well, so is that? Does that make sense with this being more of a you know McDonald's Playland fun family romp? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah, even being a yeah, jerk. Not, I'm just saying. Not, no, no, you're do, right. Do they're, they're they not kind of, you know, mell- mellowed out yes. the Nazi yeah. thing a little bit. <laughs> they, yeah. they left out the burning children, and they, you know, it, it, so where do you go from there? You got to have a little bit mellower Nazis, right? But like yeah. in, in Raiders, they were more. It wasn't just that they were less mellow. They were also like everywhere Indy showed up, they were already there. Like they were always mm, yeah. one step ahead of him. That's yeah. true. Here they're always a step behind him. Like here well, they're kind of following after him, trying to see where he's going to lead him. Are, are they? I mean, it, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Ilsa was ahead of him. And, That's true. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, she uh, and they're already here making the deals with the guy that's going to take them to the Grail. And they've also, I'm assuming that some of those extras are going to appear later on with um, you know <laughs> the, the three uh, unusual tests. But uh, I don't know if they're behind. It just it just doesn't seem like there is. They, they're not, they're they're not backing in greater numbers. They just seem to be in fewer numbers. You know, and yeah. they had a whole, yeah. had a whole sub base the last time they were dealing with this. Yeah, an island full of Nazis, and this is just like, eh, a squad. Yeah, it's like six <laughs> guys. Yeah, that's like Nazi light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like your two main Nazis aren't even in uniform. Your yeah. Donovan and your uh, your Elsa. And and yeah. you know maybe that's consistent. You know, maybe now, that's where, okay. Where, where is Elsa here? Where is she now? She shows up at the end of this scene. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we don't see her until then. Do you think she has one of those hangers like Tote had? <laughs> <laughs> they, they all do. They all yeah, do, like Christopher they... Lee did in uh, 1941. Yeah. yeah. Well, is, well, quick question for Jim. It, is, is Elsa a Nazi? Yes. She's an Irish Nazi. There you go. <laughs> she just, um, but, I mean, she is in time. it as a Nazi. Uh, you know, as the as the arc of the story sometime in the future is, I think that she will become a disenchanted Nazi, but she still, she doesn't know why she's a Nazi. She just, mm. I mean, she grew up in Germany. She seemed, all these people seemed to be doing what was going on. Then it, then it kind of jumped the rails. So she she kind of realized that at Berlin, but she still, 
I think it was it became something like a force of habit. She was in a rut. She this is what she does for work. She has mm-hmm. she has this job. It's like time to make the donuts, and she goes in. <laughs> <laughs> so she has to you know she has to go out and find the holy grail, and then that, that'll be that, and then she'll yeah. be assigned something else, and maybe she'll make department chair. So, um, <laughs> oh, fourth and fifth century pagan symbol <laughs> again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all this in World War Two. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it, it's um, it's uh, I, I don't know. It, every it, we all do this thing frame by frame, and I keep the, the the worst part about this is you just start noticing everything. You start noticing all the potted plants here. Yeah, that none nothing has grown in. Like everything there is a placement. So this this was a completely barren set there were no greeneries so when when you start pacing through this you suddenly realize none of these none of these plants are in anything but pots so it's just, it's just the greensmans <laughs> came in and filled in the whole thing that was probably like an, a completely empty atrium that was just a brick you know a, a brick courtyard and then they just oh we need some green so put this stuff in <laughs> and that's i mean the, the biggest downside of movies by minutes <laughs> I love oh, I love sure. the format, but it just it ruins it forever because you, well, like yesterday with the birds, it just right. it, <laughs> when you start noticing these things, it's, you see the paint on the walls and and where they're hitting. You know, they're, sometimes you'll see the tapes where they have to hit their marks, and it, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that's that's where we leave it with this thing. It's just uh, they're walking through the the greens that were set up there this morning, right? And sometimes right. you just have to plod through a perfectly nice little breezy scene, and you realize it's dumb. <laughs> I'm not pointing any fingers, but it happens sometimes. You're like, wait, this isn't a bad scene. It's not supposed to be seen one minute at a time with, you know, hours and hours between minutes. And Tom, then... remember, when you're pointing that finger at me, you've got three fingers pointing right back at you. Yeah. Is that what those are? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't pointing. No, I point like kind of, it's more like a kind of Jack Kirby, kind of like all my fingers are out, but only one's pointing at you, kind of hero stance. You give me yeah. a jazz hand. Uh, <laughs> Maybe that's it. I'm going for jazz hands. By the way, one one of the uh, movies I was looking at for a movies by minutes was doing the Music Man, and oh, wow. that that particular inscription, one finger pointing at you, is three back at me. <laughs> is it's at the bottom of the statue of Miser Madison in uh, Madison Park. And huh. uh, because I was looking through this movie slowly, just to think, yeah, maybe I could do. It. I saw that and I thought oh, that that ruined that for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's been ruined for you, too. So. Right. <laughs> That's what we're Well, doing. now that everything's ruined, does anybody have anything <laughs> else for uh, Minute 82? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, <laughs> speaking of genies, oh. uh, yes, this just in from Professor Christy Porter coming over the wires. <laughs> Did anyone else notice that Donovan is pigeon-toed Oh, really? <laughs> and, and did he just become that way after that pilot's death? <laughs> oh. So it rhymes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're all linked like some kind of ET thing. <laughs> That's just weird. I uh, think, yeah, I, I can't tell if I'm so sleepy. I'm imagining this conversation, <laughs> or if this is really happening. And I'm, I'm like, oh yeah, he is. He does have. A, oh, he is a little pigeon toad. That's right. Well. Maybe maybe he's hoping that Holy Grail will will fix that. Maybe Walter Donovan, Walter Pigeon. See? <laughs> um, well, bless our hearts, we made it through minute eighty two. We've done it. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for joining us this past couple of days. Thank you very much for having me. I always enjoy being on these shows. I feel like I have to study up to be on it, and it's well well worth the effort. <laughs> we always love having you here. And, uh, yeah, tell the people uh, once more where they can find you online and stuff. Yeah, find us at uh, – there's previous uh, podcasts where you can hear my uh, dulcet tones on uh, Airport Minute where we go, go over the 1970 movie Airport. Uh, also, you can find me on um, the Rocketeer Minute where uh, Hal Bryan and I go over uh, one minute of the Rocketeer at a time, Disney's 1991 movie. Uh, over at the 007 Minute, Mark Cerulli, my co-host from uh, Airport, and I are currently taking apart uh, Diamonds Are Forever, the 1971 Guy Hamilton feature. Uh, this is an occasional uh, – 
podcast, so keep checking in because there's eventually a new episode. And uh, right now, uh, go over to Airport. Well, after you're done listening to uh, uh, to this wonderful podcast, go over to the Apollo 13 Minute, Apollo13Minute.com, also available on iTunes and Google Play where you can hear us talk with a bunch of uh, aging astronauts and people who made history by walking on another planet. So be there, Apollo13Minute.com. That is awesome. You're the busiest man on the internet. I said it before, and I stand by that. <laughs> and if you're still listening here in 2018, and it's before August 18th, please join all of us, or most of us, oh my God, yeah. for the uh, uh, Movies by Minute convention over in oh, Denver, right. Colorado, yeah. August 18th. Go to uh, moviesbyminutes.com and click on the Denver button, and you can be part of this great cavalcade of uh, undeniable vocal talent out there and uh, shake hands and tell people what they're doing wrong on their show. Yes. <laughs> and how you would do it better. Yes. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Um, please do all those things. And please come back here tomorrow where we will discuss minute 83 of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade here on the Indiana Jones Minute. Three wishes, Tommy. Quickly. Oh, <laughs> from my, uh, from my little belly button. Life, just be slightly <laughs> taller and uh, a lot smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, <laughs> uh, I my first wish would be that I don't have to rub your belly, and I, you know what? My second and third will probably be that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with a, a, a singing voice, the ability to stop saying "but um" in <laughs> sentences, <laughs> and editing within the same time that it takes a podcast to run out. Oh, oh nice! Yeah. That's a dream. Wow. <laughs> A man can dream. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> I just, I just want my belly rubbed. <laughs> <laughs> One, like two, the three. Old joke. <laughs> Aren't you guys a little old to believe in genies? You guys have been up late. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you, say, you guys are a little old to believe in genies.